Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues. Today is Tuesday, and we have a very special episode planned today. Yes, we've been teasing yeah. it. We um, as far as the working document. <laughs> that's right. We are now it's going been to in our minds for ages. We're going to read to you now the working document um, and discuss mm-hmm. all the writings therein. This document pertains to. Bachelor in Paradise season ten, which may or may not be happening. Heard of it? Um, Bachelor season, Bachelor in Paradise season nine, was an unmitigated disaster. We all know this. A poop baby. It was a poop baby with a within a poop baby. We know that mm-hmm. its ratings were the worst in the history of Bachelor in Paradise. We know that it had a massive lead in uh, ratings show in Golden Bachelor season one, and then it mm-hmm. dropped about half of those viewers. Who were saying Couldn't retain yeah, half I, for a show from the same franchise about dating that aired immediately preceding it? All people had to do was leave their TVs on, but half of those people said, <laughs> "No, thank you. I'm turning my TV off. I'm going to get up <laughs> and going to do anything else, <laughs> or, or I'm going to watch something else." Even um, it was just Clip terrible. With my eyeballs, if you're clues, that's correct. That's how he changes his TV. <laughs> I wish, uh, and he has a butterfly tattoo. Maybe one day. But the idea that Bachelor in Paradise Season 9 was so bad that ABC may not order a Season 10 is very real. We don't know if that decision has been made yet. I tend to think it has not. I think they are very likely going to see what's happening in Gen Trans season to see what kind of guys they might be able to pull into a new season, and maybe they'll give it another shot. But right now, it hasn't been The idea that Bachelor in Paradise is canceled is not real to me, to be clear. Yeah, it is very real. I refuse to believe To many people at this point. Look, all you got to do is look at the tell-all from Grazia Day season, the women tell-all. Usually in that women tell-all, Paradise is thrown around. Sometimes people are actively Mm -hmm. invited on the show, or they announce that they will be going on Paradise in that women tell-all. They did not even utter the well, word maybe, paradise. Maybe it's too far in advance of paradise because we've got Golden, we've got Golden Bachelorette. But I would know, assume it's going to do, it would be the same You think you schedule. do nine seasons and you're not going to do a Bachelor in Paradise 10? If the numbers ain't there, if it doesn't make sense financially, if the budget is higher than the money it will bring in, they ain't making it. That's I don't it. think any of this makes sense financially to me. <laughs> what do you mean? Any of what? So they're still doing it. <laughs> no. TV <Bachelor>. ad. <laughs> right. But that's just because there's like a, an antiquated kind of like advertising industry that is still like, well, TV ads worked for me when I was a young ad exec in 1954, yeah. so I'm going to keep doing it. That doesn't make sense to me. Right. Um, Whatever. I mean, ratings anyway, across network TV are we, doing uh, annoying, but Bachelor It was Paradise bad, is, was, is the point. Bad. Yeah, exactly. And so, what Pace Case and I... No one got any gains from the from that season, although the season before arguably could have been a poop baby as well. That's true. It's steadily gotten worse and worse and worse over the past three seasons creamy or so. Creamy Caesar. Yeah, the Creamy Caesar, all baby. of that. Um, but what Pace Case and I are going to try and do here today is make an episode that hopefully the producers will listen to. And please, these are free ideas. We are telling you how to save bachelor in paradise if you do these things it will give you how to a save new show. bachelor in paradise um so shall we just jump into this pace case yes we've got a list of things here and let's go make no mistake Get into the working document <laughs> what we are <laughs> pitching here what we are presenting is an extensive overhaul this is essentially a new show and it is exactly what mm-hmm. you need to counteract the ill effects of Bachelor Se- Bachelor of Paradise season nine, that in my mind it killed the show. That was a funeral for Bachelor in Paradise. And what you now need is a phoenix rising from the ashes, a corpse rising from the grave, if you will. Uh, a rebrand in a splendid new outfit. Yes, a rebrand. So let's begin. The first thing on our list is you need a new location. Playa Escondido was great. But it's done now. We, the fourth audience, when I say we, I mean the fourth audience collectively, all of us watching the show in the pit in the nation. Yeah, just us, just me and Pace Case. (laughs) We associate the old location with all the most recent seasons of the show, 
which are all mm-hmm. presented as cheap and torturous. We need a new luxurious location. We know you got the money for it after Grazi. Where we haven't seen someone presumably pee on camera into the sand. Yes. They've talked about how the day beds have been there <laughs> for years and years. Like it it needs it needs to go. And I think we have precedent for it now. I agree. They're moving Bachelorette. Yes. I think that you have to treat the location of paradise with the same reverence that you treat the locations of Bachelor. When you're going around the world and staying mm-hmm. at these extravagant hotels in Paris or wherever, we know Gen C's and a bunch of it's going to be in New Zealand and Australia, you have to make the location of Paradise feel like that. You have to make it a place people want to go. The whole show should be it's like... It's called Bachelor in Paradise. Exactly. and there, It's not supposed to be a joke. Yes. Somehow over the course of the last three or four seasons, it did become a joke that Paradise was hell on earth. It can't be. It needs to be a high-end resort location or at least like a nice mansion that you rent on a beach that can house all of the people. The whole show should be one big fantasy sweet date in a nice tropical location. If there are crabs, just don't show the crabs. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Don't show the crabs in people's rooms. Don't show people being tortured in any way. pretend they're only outside. I completely agree. They turned Paradise, that location, it became something of a character unto itself in the in the last few seasons where it was like oh mm-hmm. it's so hot there's all these bugs there's all these crabs we have to sleep on these day beds and it, it just didn't it look magically fun magically animated a suitcase god we'll get to that we'll get to the comedy team <laughs> that's one of our uh things that need to be changed as well but the, the basis of this no spoilers <laughs> the basis of this new location is really that it needs to be a place people want to go not a place people survive mm-hmm. It should be a, a lovely tropical location. You have Love Island. Sometimes those seasons are set like overlooking the ocean in Spain. Yeah. Like they're not at somewhere that is advertised as kind of disgusting. Perfect match. They're staying mm-hmm. in a nice building. Um, All of the other are... all-star shows do it better, period, yeah. in terms of location. And it's like if you want a show that is competitive with a perfect match – with a Love Island, yeah. with any of these other shows, too hot to handle, it has to be like that. It's got to be at least that. You're competing good. with them for the ratings, but you're also competing with them for the cast members. Yes. Where are the cast members going to want to go? Love is Blind seems a lot easier to do than going on Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Especially if you're trying to get gains. Yeah. Uh, speaking of. Switching things up, our second change we would like to enact to save Bachelor in Paradise is a new intro. Get rid of the 40-year-old song, (laughs) Almost Paradise by Mike Reno from Loverboy and Ann Wilson from Heart, 1984, for the Footloose soundtrack. Hmm, Mm -hmm. fun facts. Get rid of the player intros that mimic a 40-year-old sitcom, Three's Company, Make this shit sexy, not goofy. Get a new song that's maybe even an original song just for Paradise. I would like this intro to be shorter. I would be okay if the intro was just what they're doing for Bachelor now and Golden Bachelor. A dramatic scene. I don't Mm. need a song. I I, kind of like the song because to me, Mm -mm. I want it to be like a party type thing. I want an EDM song made by a big EDM artist of contemporary times, and I want it to mm. feel like a beach party, you know? Quick shots of, like... Taylor uh, Swift. I wouldn't go with Taylor Swift. I would go with some kind of EDM, like, dance I think we could song. Because you want it to feel like, oh, it's these young, hot people out here dancing to their mm-hmm. EDM on the beach, getting drunk, uh, falling <laughs> in love. That's, to me, what it should be. <laughs> you need to get Rez or somebody else. When up has here. EDM ever been a part of that never that's what i'm saying update it they're using a song okay. that was on the radio in 1984 i mean that's insane i did not know the song you don't know almost paradise i mean i knew it from bachelor in paradise wow interesting mm-hmm. no it was a big hit on the radio and those two people why i put that information in there uh 
Mike Reno and Ann Wilson from Loverboy and Heart. Those are two gigantic bands from the 80s. And they kind of came together to form this super duo to make that song. It was a very big song, no doubt about it. But the idea that you're now using it as a, a theme song on a dating show 40 years later, it's, again, we, we've been through this a bunch with all the different things, like when uh -huh. they tried to do the Clear Crawley promo that was mimicking. Mrs. Robinson. Yes, it's just like that doesn't yeah. work. No one who is under, like I'm 47 years old, Nobody who is even, I would say, 35 or under knows what the hell this song is. And certainly, they don't get the reference that you're trying to do a funny joke on the video component of it, of people like, you know, looking into the camera with a silly face and their name pops up. That's a parody of The Three's Company opening, which is a sitcom that is also 40 years old. No one gets these references. No one cares. It makes your show feel old and dusty. You I'll gotta be under get rid of it. I'll for a month, and I don't get it. <laughs> uh, here's my main problem, though. It is too long. Yeah. I don't like how long it is. It's boring. Like sometimes I'm amused by the intros, but I would like it to be shorter. Mm. We have TikTok attention spans. Give it to me straight. I want to just. I, I, I'm sorry. I think in all ways it should be elevated to the main game. I think it's not, I think it's still sexier, but it's not less elevated. And they treat mm -hmm. it like it's this shittier cousin of the main game. I agree. And it, it shouldn't be that. This is your all star game. I do think that they could make a title like 10 seconds, maybe, is all you need with it. Just to make a vibe, just to let us know that, like, oh shit, what is this? The old Three's Company thing's gone. The old song from 1984 is gone. It's like some kind of upbeat, new, mm. contemporary song. The The visuals are like, they look nice. Ooh. It's not people getting hit in the head with coconuts. I'm starting and to get a pep in my all step. This shit. See? I'm getting off the couch. I'm dancing out yes, the door. Yes, exactly. It just gets you in that mood to be like, oh, shit, this is fun. What's going on here? It's not, uh, who was it? Deanie Baby's Ungler coming out of a pool and spitting water at the camera. Remember that one? <laughs> There were, there have been way worse ones. It's not DLP throwing a burrito to Wells Adams, who oh, we'll get to in a okay. minute. That might be the, that might be you know, the worst. You can't have that. that. Might be it's the like worst when one. you do that. When you, I thought it was a hoagie for so long, and I was so confused. I think it's a burrito or just like a rolled up quesadilla. It I'm is sure. a burrito. It is. You just can't have that. If you want us to take the relationships on the show seriously, you yourself, the creators of the show, the people making the show, must also take the show seriously. And that's what that opening intro intro should convey. And it is what was conveyed in Bachelor Season 28, like you're saying, with those just like, here's a clip from the third act. You better watch to see what a happens. A really dramatic moment. Yes. You get hit with that, like, I don't know, adrenaline, yeah. some sort of but something. Like, I don't... And then you got to get back there. I don't know if that exactly works for Paradise, though, because it works very well in Bachelor because you're I following one story. You're following the Bachelor story or the Bachelorette story. And there's a bunch of other characters that come in and out of it and who's going to wind up as a ring winner and all that. But in Paradise, it's like there's multiple pieces like kind of moving in an array. I feel like you want to just drop a tone in and be like, this is going to be a fun one. You know, I don't know. Um, I think one clip, even if yeah. it's a couple you don't remember or whatever, if it's dramatic enough, mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. Fair we, enough. Speaking of what's interesting to us as the fourth audience, me and Clues, our third item on this working document is no players from any seasons before the most recent two. Ooh, this is going to be tough for them. I know. Because they love they love to just yeah. make fun of someone who was a night one person. Chris Bukowski can never be brought back. I'm sorry to say. Um, mm. This is... Well, he can't because he found true love. Supposedly. This to me is... <gasps> How dare you? No, I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, Bukowski and Anna Redman are endgame. Perhaps. We will see. Time will tell. But this to me is... It's a commitment to a hard reset. The most recent seasons, I'm talking about Bachelor in Paradise season seven, eight, and nine, were all of them disastrous. And we don't want to see those people anymore. What Grazia Day's season has done is reset the main game. And I think Jen Tran is going to continue that reset as well. All we mm -hmm. want to know and all we want to see are players from those two seasons. 
Stay with the reset. Stay with the players who got you the highest ratings. You have superstars coming out of Grazia Day's season mm-hmm. that deserve the right to play in paradise. And you probably will in Gen Trans. And that's two. who we want to see. Yeah. We want to see Daisy. We want to see Maria. We want to see Rachel. These superstars are why we got those higher ratings. And you're going to give us the cast we want. And it will also be easier for the couples to not know each other because the, they won't have seen the most recent season. Yeah, none of uh, Grazia Day's players will have seen any of the guys from that season. So it will literally be people meeting each other for the first time, which I think will be fantastic. But it also mm-hmm. is... Everyone's on kind of more of an even playing field. Absolutely. Um, it's also an implicit commitment from the producers Essentially saying, we acknowledge season seven, eight, and nine of Paradise were terrible. We get it. And we're moving on. The specter of those seasons cannot be brought into the new product. You need to make a clean mm-hmm. break, a hard reset. The show has to look different. It has to be in a different place, different titles, different song. And all the players have to come from this new renaissance era of The Bachelor. Do not go back into the dark days of 7, 8, and 9 Bachelor of Paradise. We just don't want to see it. I don't want to see uh, Rodney Matthews uh, leaving the show and everybody <laughs> breaking down sobbing. sobbing. I don't want to see anybody who had to go through split week or deal with Sally's suitcase or the truth box or any of that shit. It was all bad. Leave it in the past. Not only that, but I want to see four TRR relationships. And yeah. it's so hard watching the most recent seasons because the four TRR couples, the ones that get engaged, Almost all of them, to me, feel like they've already been dating or they knew each other somehow Mm. or DMing or whatever. And I think that when you're staying true to the premise of the show, it's that these people are are all the all-stars and they're meeting each other for the first time here to see if there's a connection. And we, the fourth audience, get to see it from an inception. Yeah. That's what I want. I agree 100%. And it to be for TRR. I agree. It helps. I totally agree with you. It is more true to the nature of the show. And the producers always blame like, oh, well, they were meeting at Coachella and Stagecoach and they were DMing each other. Like it's the player's fault for using a cell phone, which we'll get to in a minute. That's another thing on this list. And going to Stagecoach. Yeah. It's not the player's fault for that. That's whatever. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's move on. We just love festivals. Who doesn't love a good festival? Me. Even if it gives you COVID. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> as honestly i had forgotten that and someone brought it up in the live because yeah. i was sad i wasn't going to coachella and they were like didn't you get covid from coachella last time i was like oh yeah <laughs> i did so now you just blocked that part of it out of your mind that was the first time i ever got it yeah, yeah damn um all right let's move on our fourth yeah, let them go to the festivals Ugh. sponsor the festivals God. Yes. stagecoach in my opinion should be sponsored by bachelor Film Bachelor it. presents Stagecoach. Film it, you cowards. Um, all right, let's move on. Our fourth item. Stagecoach is the new Olympics. Olympic Village. Oh, we heard that today in our live as well. Um, our fourth item here on the list is all players arrive on day one. Holding players back to manufacture these kind of weak early season love triangles, meaningless We all see through it. Nobody in the fourth audience cares or wants this to happen. And by doing this, a lot of times you invalidate the actual relationships that could form, which you want to last till the end of the show. That's what the show is about. Because you have people treading water or like, I need to play this person until the person I really want shows up. Mm -hmm. If you give everyone... The you end up with <laughs> Brendan and Natasha situation. Exactly. Which which is they're forced to. And that was one of the worst moments of the last three seasons. It really to me was kind of the, mm-hmm. the pinnacle moment of like, oh, they don't know how to make this show. Um if you give every player the most time possible to fall in love and you make sure that you're making an environment conducive to that, you're gonna get four TR relationships at the end. No split weeks, no mm-hmm. no truth boxes. Uh, no fucker flea round. We'll get to that a little bit later. But it's the big benefit of this, in my opinion, is you don't get the useless 10-minute sequences of people showing up at the top of the stairs and saying hello to Jesse and then walking down the stairs and, oh, God, who's coming? There is no drama Mm -hmm. in this. It is a complete waste of time. And uh, 
real the estate. The only here, do- right? drama is the creatures that they cut back and forth between <laughs> them walking <laughs> yeah. down the stairs. Is it we be don't the need the lizard it. or the bird. Just, just like the intro sequence, we don't need the walking down the stairs montage. It gets us nothing, and it just feels old. It, it again, it's very much like the intro. It feels like an old sitcom. It just is like dusty, and and it just feels mm-hmm. out of touch. This isn't what this show is about. It's not about like, oh my God, who's coming down the stairs? We all know the entire cast yeah, list before the I show ever comes weigh. out. Like, don't make them don't make them have to weigh the timing of like when they're with someone or oh, I don't want to get with this person because yeah. this person might come. Let them go talk to their first choice right away. Exactly. Let's see. It like I, I kind of understand it in the beginning phases of this game. I, I get it, you know. You have to have some structure, some like narrative structure to hang everything on. A person shows up, they have a mm-hmm. date card, they go on a date. Will they stay with that person or find another person? I get all of that. And it seems to work the okay. love triangle. Yeah, or a love triangle part of that as well. It just doesn't work. And you wind up with situations like Ivan Hall and Alexa Ray Caves, where you have sequestered somebody for the entire two weeks. They never get to come to Paradise, but the person that wanted them to come there is like, well, shit, I need to talk to him anyway. They sneak out of the room to go talk to him, and then you have to reprimand them. How dare you go against this? It's like, isn't this show about helping me find love? That's the person that I think I might have a shot with. Can I please talk to her? It's just dumb. It, she got caves. She got caves, um, unfortunately. But for my money, this is like one of the most important things. You can't have these staggered entrances. You need 10... Uh, guys, 10 women, 20 players total. They're all there all the time. And they all start from the very beginning. None of these entrances. And if you really want to do Mm -hmm. like entrances, it's like we were talking about earlier. You do the airport thing. You have them like how excited they are to be getting on the plane to go to paradise. Yes. We're almost like the, the cast intro where they're filming themselves. I think that, they're starting to do little tastes of that. Mm-hmm. They did, um, you know, ready and rolling for the after the final rose of just like stepping outside the show. I think they need to do that more. And then in that way, if you're starting with the airport, you it just like it feels more real. And you're kind of like, oh, we're going on this ad- fun adventure. Mm-hmm. Not like, I mean, when they come down staggered, I'm always thinking about the ones who are trapped in the hotel Me still. Me too. You know, I'm like, and it's so mean, like whoever is last sand, like. Yeah, it's a waste. It's horrible to watch. It's a waste. And it's also not, there is no suspense in who's showing up on the beach. We all know as soon as the cast list is solidified, it's all over the internet. We all know literally all 40 people that are going to show up there. uh, There there is no suspense. And so do the players. Exactly. Exactly. There's no point in doing this anymore. It is a really, at this point, it just feels antiquated and like yeah, you're, you're like treating like the fourth audience like something. we're stupid. And it's mm-hmm. never fun to watch a show like that for any reason, in my opinion. Uh, shall we move on, Pace K? Speaking of uh, fun, our number five item on the list is incorporate players from other games. Get some Love is Blind people on the show. Get Love Island people on the show. Use players from other franchises so you're backdooring those audiences into Bachelor Nation. We're seeing other shows already doing this, just not the dating shows yet. But someone will, and it should be Bachelor. Blaze a trail here. Set the standard. Don't get caught in a position where another franchise does this and steals a player from your player pool first. Whoever does this first is going to win the game and everyone else loses that game and celebrate the other franchises in it. We did not like to see when Love is Blind was not saying Bachelor when they were interviewing Blake Horseman at the reunion. They let him show up but didn't let him say Bachelor. Acknowledge the other games. Give them their credit. We all do as a fourth audience. We watch all of these shows. We don't care which network is making the show. Mm -hmm. We watch them all. We love them all. The first franchise that is going to accept this fact is going to explode in popularity. 100%. We are seeing it. Which I kind of see it in Traders already. (laughs) Traders have set the blueprint. You should be seeking out the superstars from other uh, games. Mm -hmm. Like what they did with Jess Vestal. Has she hit a million? I'm checking right now. She was at 900 (laughs) and something. When are you not checking? Um, 
I'm always checking. That's just my nature. <laughs> Jess Vestal <laughs> is currently at 950K. She is going to be on Perfect Ooh, Match Season 2 with go. Harry Jowsey. She will be well over a million. Uh, now, that photo of them together yeah. in the ocean, iconic. Absolutely. I mean, Harry Jowsey, too hot to handle. Into Perfect Match. Get Harry Jowsey on Paradise. Oh, yeah. You want the biggest stars you I can mean, have. I mean, he's also... He's also become an even bigger star because yeah. he joined the the Call Her Daddy network. Yes. God, I know. I'll say this. There's something that happens in these franchises. I was talking to Will about this um, regarding WWE. Both The Bachelor and WWE were run by guys who at one time loved the thing they were running. Loved wrestling, loved, the, like Mike Fleiss, when he created The Bachelor, I think he loved reality TV. Then at a certain point, something happens. That thing gets so big mm. that the person at the top of it feels like they have to control it, that it's theirs, and they choke the fucking life mm -hmm. out of it. And then they get removed because horrible, bad, problematic <laughs> shit pops up and <laughs> investigations <laughs> reveal uh, this person can no longer be trusted around other human beings. And they get removed uh, from the franchise. And as a result, the vacuum gets filled, hopefully, with people who love and the thing again. we get a again. Grazia Day season. Exactly. A phoenix rising yes. from the ashes. Because it's like the toxicity gets pulled out. That idea of like, fuck it, I have to control mm -hmm. everything gets pulled out. And I'm hopeful that that is the case if they're going to make another paradise. That the people in charge don't have that toxic need to control. And that feeds right into getting players from other games. I get it. Bachelor's its own thing. But let Bachelor be the franchise that absorbs all of these other franchises into the All-Star game. Because like Pace Case was saying. We all want it. People are yes. constantly asking for Love is Blind people to be the Bachelorette. Absolutely. And it is something that, look, whether you want to do it or not, some franchise is going to do this. Mm -hmm. And if it's not the Bachelor, the Bachelor's All-Star game is gone. You will then just I mean, become a feeder league to their all-star game. Best all the Bachelorette. It would be gigantic, and that just yeah. requires a little open-mindedness on the parts of the producers to be like, "Oh, these other shows are valuable too. They are not our competition, even though they are." But you have to have the idea that even they're not. Even if the people are already famous from a show, it doesn't mean that they don't have relationships, or will have relationships for the camera. Of Either course, way. of course. But I mean, to even bring them into your product, into the game that you're asking them to play, I, I understand that there is this idea of like, no, Bachelor Nation is Bachelor Nation and fuck these other shows. But that ain't how it is now. Bachelor Nation started all this stuff, but there's a lot more of it now. And all these people yeah. are, to us, the people who watch Bachelor, they are just as interesting, just as entertaining. And if you can bring those worlds together and be the first ones to do it, you got us locked in for life. Must be done. <laughs> Look, you got Clues and I locked in for life anyway, but a lot of other people yes. <laughs> might go away. Speaking of people going away. <laughs> find it in the first place. <laughs> our, nice. <laughs> our number six item on this list is you got to get rid of the comedy team responsible for poop baby and sally's suitcase um a little comedy mm -hmm. is like fine but it can't be contradictory to making the players look hot it, Heads it just must can't roll for this i agree no more creamy caesar no poop baby no scallop fingers mm -mm. if the players are funny cut them to be even funnier but make them funny people don't make the comedy at their expense that to me is yeah. like a cardinal oh, scallop sin fingers that was tough yeah or like the night like who are you the night one players it's never who are you it's like, oh, God, so good to see you again. Um, and they made Mad Chad shit his pants, too. Yeah, all of that. Like, you can't do it. You can't have dates designed to make them look like fools, the, the human churros and all that stuff. You can't human do taco. this. And unfortunately, this means Wells Adams has to go. He's got to go. You can't have him going on podcast saying the funniest thing he's ever seen in his life is when one of your superstar players gets demolished by a wave. That's not what the show is. It's, I mean, it is now, but it can't be that. It cannot be that. And his jokes, I, I'm sorry I to say, are not good. I don't think if he is the lead comedy producer, I don't think that's a good choice. Um, I mean, he shouldn't even be on camera, in my opinion. He is part of the old paradise. We do paradise. think, by the way... 
it's not nothing personal to Wells, but I do think you need to get rid of the bartender rule. Yes. I think that it it lowers DLP's prestige. He should just be hosting. He is the empathetic king. Maybe have celebrity guests, legacy players dropping in to host challenges. But yes. we don't need this strange other semi-host. It, again, is it's kind of part of that, like, it's a sitcom. The tone they're trying mm-hmm. to convey. The truth box. Yeah, the truth box was terrible. Um, <laughs> the tone they're trying to convey. Like, no, but the truth box stays. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you can keep the truth box, but that's it. No, I'm I'm joking. Um, the tone they're trying to convey with this show is a 1980s multicam sitcom. It's everything from the title sequence to the funny bartender who's cracking jokes. You just can't have it anymore. That that a is not interesting to us as a fourth audience in a dating show, and b is nowhere on television anymore. The multicam <laughs> sitcom is dead. <laughs> Yeah. It's just a, it's yeah. so antiquated. It's like vaudeville at this point. You can't have a, a mm-hmm. dating format in the year 2024 mimicking a sitcom from 1984. No. The format needs to at least somewhat mock how people actually date in real life at this point. And the <laughs> telling a bartender about their about all of their feelings and love triangles. It's it's not. It's giving clown behavior. Who, by the way, is always sweating constantly. I mean, that's another thing to tack on to change the location. Who? Get a place where people aren't sweating in every shot, in my opinion. Oh. Um, well. Anyway, the comedy team must I go. I don't know if I agree with that one. I, I simply think <laughs> their ideas are bad, almost always, and they're poorly executed, almost always. And uh, it's just unnecessary. No wigs making fun of players yeah. who don't even appear on camera. And that was just some kind of vindictive I would say, thing. Cut that. I agree. Mm-hmm. Don't be mad at your players. Your players are your stars. Without them, you have nothing. the The quality of your product is literally only as good as your players' quality. And yes, you can edit them to make them look better or worse or whatever, but. You have these superstars coming out of Bachelor season 28. I mean, utter superstars. The top 10 Mm -hmm. of that season are really unlike anything we've seen in any specific season. There might be a standout player here or there. That's why we need this Bachelor in Paradise season so badly. I agree. We can't let this talent get away like we did with Popeye's season. Oh, God. Madison Pruitt and Hannah Celeste. There were so many good players on that season. We didn't get Paradise because of freaking COVID. I know. I know. Uh, Speaking of modernization, our number seven item is let the players have their phones. Love is blind, does it? You got to do it. And make social media a part of the show in a way that we all already know it is. This is what we're talking about with the don't treat us like we're stupid. They are all influencers. Put the follower counts of the players on screen next to their names with their chirons. Casting is considering players' social media to be their resume. So do we. We go over them every season. And they discuss social media followers on all of these other shows. You're constantly seeing people on Love Island be like, hey, what what's your Instagram like? How many followers do you have? And... This is also how the fourth audience votes for their favorites during and after the show. First, with the eyeballs on the Nielsen ratings, and then the thumbs on the phones. And let the players make trending social media in-game. Then the show will get more free engagement. This is, again, you can't be anti-social media. This is how people stay engaged with the show. Yeah, it's a part of the show. This is how they're connecting to it. This is how it becomes a lifestyle like it is for us. <laughs> yeah, the vilification of social media, which I would argue has like kind of always been a part of The Bachelor since social media really started to happen, but it came to a head, obviously, with Brennan Rice and Piper James in, I believe that was season seven of BIP, uh, where Grocery and his gang of disgruntled females I had to... So excommunicate them from paradise forever and also excommunicate Chris Connor and Alana Milne because supposedly they met each other at some party before 
Paradise was airing. And now they're together and uh, we're now just married. Engaged. engaged, sorry, yeah. Um, An engagement. But this is kind of a, it goes, I think, kind of in the category of like, the show needs to get with the times. Bachelor is an old yeah. show. It was created before smartphones existed in the year 2002, mm-hmm. before any social media really existed. Paradise kind of came into being in 28 or uh, 2014, sorry, in the same kind of time when Instagram really started to take off. And I think there was always this fight in the producer's mind of like, well, we have to ignore that, this thing that's happening, social media. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. That's not a part of this. And if you use this it, this thing that's affecting how and why people are going on our show. Yes. Embrace it. Make it a part of the show. You don't have to make it a part of traditional Bachelor and Bachelorette. I get that. It's a closed environment. You forfeit your civil rights. I understand all of that. But Paradise (laughs) can't be like that. Let them have their phones. Let them be DMing with each other on the beach. Let them be reading shit to each other off their phones. Let us read those DMs. Exactly. Let them have their phones. And and the, the clause is not you have to give us your phone. The clause is you have to give us access to your phone. You're recording their screens 24-7. Yeah. You get to put that shit in the show if you want. That's part of it. I mean, they give the Love Island players like fake phones on the show yeah. that they can just use to like take pictures. Yeah, give them a Paradise phone. Um, Great. That works yeah. too. But you got to mm-hmm. let them have phones. You, you just got to... It seems so bizarre uh, when you're watching like a big group of people like in Paradise just like laying around, drinking margaritas, staring at the sky, watching each other like lift rocks on the beach um Mm -hmm. it's weird they need phones it looks weird for them to not have phones bachelor the main games are a little different for some reason i'm like okay with them being sequestered and not having phones i think they should have phones i think they should have phones on that maybe uh all right shall we move on free the hashtag free the phone uh speaking of making people do stuff they don't do when they're normally dating people our number eight item change the fuck or flee round or get rid of it entirely do not make people do fake breakups just to get back together immediately after the show ends let everyone have an overnight date if they want keep everyone there even if they're not going to propose they all can have a party for the people who do propose and you end it on this big high note with everyone who is there that season supporting the couples that did make it through this yes the cast is the cast. 20 people. That's it. And you may have a couple of people eliminating. Like you might have somebody going mm-hmm. down the road of a 4 TR relationship and they get heartbroken and they're like, I can't stay here and they leave. That's an interesting mm-hmm. thing. They lose the love triangle. Yes. Don't the Rose game to me is like it also feels very antiquated. It's very weird and forced. And we see that the producers manipulate it to their end. Like when Natasha Parker was given a rose by Big Polly mm-hmm. to have her stay on the show. Like the roses don't matter. We know they're fake. We know the producers control yeah. it all. Uh, when you're seeing like a friend rose being given out or whatever, that's like they go up to Braden and they're like, you got to give Rachel Recky a rose so she can stay around. And then he does it. Um, the roses just are, are kind of a meaningless thing. And they need to go away, in my opinion. It's 20 I players agree. there. And they're heteronormative. And For the most part. You know, they did let they, uh, Demi. I know, but that was like a room. special exception. It yeah. should be built in the show that you can give, you can partner with whoever you want. Yeah, but I don't think we need the roses. I don't think we need the rose ceremony because it's, the, the weird thing about the rose ceremony is this, in my opinion. The whole idea of, bachelor in paradise is that it's like these people are really dating for real and they're trying to fall in love and also here's this weird scoring system that you have to win this game component of it obviously i'm all for it being a game but the rose ceremony in paradise at least is this weird half step toward like well is this a game or is it not a game and why is what's a friendship Mm -hmm. rose and why is natasha parker getting a rose out of nowhere people tend to be go safer with their decisions because they're like well this person has been my friend for longer they were first sand i Mm -hmm. can't really vote off someone for sand yes um it is all very bizarre i agree but uh Oh, sorry. I think I skipped ahead. <laughs> that was going to be our number nine one, the no more roses. We're Wait, we're on number eight, that? right? Am I crazy? Wait, we did number eight. Did we? That's change, change, change the makeup or breakup. Yeah, the makeup or breakup. You let everybody basically stay there till the end. Um, 
whatever. We can just move on. Our number nine. Wait, I thought we were already talking about Rosie. Were we? <laughs> <laughs> I guess they kind of go hand in hand. You know what I mean? The the Okay. We'll just move I on guess. to it. I, I think I skipped ahead accidentally, but maybe you maybe we didn't. Maybe we were there. Honestly, I lost track of what you yeah. were saying. I just get so amped up when I'm were. trying to save Bachelor in Paradise that time. I know. Look, I may have too. I feel stressed. I, I do too. felt stressed doing this. I'm like yeah. Well, I really want to make sure we get everything so I know. that we really save it. I, I agree. Um, Look, and I'll just say this to the producers who may or may not be listening. What we are pitching here is drastic change. I'm well aware of that. And I know that there's an attitude, especially in network TV, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, Bachelor in Paradise is broken. It needs mm-hmm. fixing. And this is a way to do it uh, that I think will yield great results for you. Yes, and the rebrand will get in people who have maybe never checked out Bachelor because yeah. it's so old, but they have watched Love is Blind. I know so many people who only watch Love is Blind have never watched Bachelor. Same, same. But um, back to this No Roses thing. This was our number nine thing. So we are basically <laughs> saying yeah. to do away with the most fundamental game mechanic of your game because... It's old and it doesn't work. And we've seen you manipulate it enough, like the Natasha Parker Rose, that it it doesn't hold water. If the game, it would be like if you're playing a basketball game and the referees just like stop the game and they're like, uh, just give that team 25 points. They win. (laughs) Wait, what? But they didn't score those points. So you have invalidated (laughs) the Roses through your own machination. They now need to be done Mm -hmm. away with. And here's what replaces them. A brand new mechanic. This is how the show works now. 20 players show up. At the end of every day, you have to partner with someone. This can be a romantic partnership. It can be two friends. It can be whatever. But you have to be a partner with someone. The next morning, you all compete in challenges. Similar to Perfect Match, you can set up fun little things on the beach. They can be trivia contests, running obstacle course, whatever. Reality TV type stuff. Like what they do in Traders too. That All that works fine. You're doing mm-hmm. these kinds of games. And you're competing again as pairs against everybody. So 10 pairs are competing in these games. The winner of each challenge gets, listen to this, a date card. And even if this is a platonic pairing... Like, I'm imagining uh, Aaron Clancy and James Bonsall getting to go into the Mm -hmm. hotel and eat a nice steak dinner together, and that's going to be funny as hell. Go ride horses. Exactly. You know, through the water. And it adds this interesting element, I think, to the game mechanic that is like, well, wait a minute. Is a couple that's, like, trying to stay in this 4TR going to win these challenges and get these dates or not? And if they don't, it doesn't really matter because you can still focus. Best friendship wins. Exactly. Best friendship wins. But you can also focus on the 4TR love relationships just on the beach or wherever they are. You can cut Mm -hmm. the show into whatever you want. It's going to give you a massive amount of footage and a massive amount of uh, story to be told because the couple isn't beholden to getting a date card, isn't beholden to exchanging roses. They can actually play out their relationship in real time, with one another, and maybe there's another player that comes in and wants to shoot their shot or whatever, but you're not locked into this weird game structure that doesn't make any sense anyway, in my opinion. (laughs) In my opinion as well, uh, I also think that this eliminates the weird element of that it they it has to be hetero relationships. I know we haven't really gotten there with the main game yet, but just in terms of catching up in 2024. I mean, we're watching fucking um, Ultimatum, Queer Ultimatum. Mm-hmm. That show was amazing. Yeah. It was the highest or most viewed of all the Ultimatums as well. As it should Lesson be. Lesson learned, as right? As someone who watched the yeah. other ones. <laughs> Lesson not learned. Were... Then the next season Tough. was back to hetero. I'm like, what are you doing? You got gold here. You, you just keep doing that. I know. I know. That's a mistake. We'll we'll save how to save queer ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they need our help. Uh, they just I'm need just to kidding. make that show it's, again. It's perfect. Um our number 10 item on our list, uh, how to save Bachelor in Paradise is resurrection cards. 
one man and one woman from each season can win crash cards that they can use to crash a future season of Bachelor or Bachelor Bachelorette. This is a fan favorite, and we get to vote who gets the resurrection card, yeah. who we want to see on the next season. I think that incorporating the fourth audience is something that a lot of these other shoes, shows are doing as well. Mm. Love Island, mostly, just yeah. constantly incorporating them. Um, and I want to be voting. I want to be voting on things that are happening. Me too. Bachelor has tried yes. to do it. America's Fimp, we, we saw that disaster. But this is mm-hmm. a way to do it that, in my opinion, actually works. Because the votes can be over the course of a season or whatever. You set up the voting whenever. Make it an actual vote, not, we're going to count the hashtags on Twitter. It's got to be a real thing that is objective. And then not count them. Uh, yeah. And then those two people <laughs> yeah. get their, their cards. Their you can crash a season card. It's up to them if they want to use it, and they may not. What if they fall in love immediately after Paradise with somebody else, et cetera, et cetera? They just throw it in a fire. (laughs) They throw it in a bonfire. (laughs) They just can't give out cards on the show at all anymore. You just don't know what the outcome of giving that person that card would be, but they have the opportunity to come back into the main game. That is fascinating to me because we always see people crashing seasons, and in prior seasons it has been like, Vial was DMing with Caitlin Bristow, uh, the big sin, don't use social media, but he was able to use that to crash his season. Blake Moynes did it on Katie Thurston's season. We saw um, Heather Martin attempt to do it on Matt Your James' boy, season. Bukowski <laughs> trying to do it a bunch Bukowski. of times. <laughs> Not Bukowski. All Heather Martin. <laughs> poor Bukowski. And poor Heather Martin, Pizza Head. You know, uh, I'll always remember her for that <laughs> at this point. No. But these um, crashings oh. seem they're almost like antithetical to the game of it. It's either like, well, this player has been talking with the bachelor or bachelorette like behind the scenes through social media, Mm -hmm. maybe has an unfair advantage and that's why they're coming in. Or it's like Heather Martin that just seems like a completely bonehead producer idea. They have to say they have an unfair advantage to justify it. Exactly. Whereas this is exactly the opposite. It's we want to see this person come back. So you know Mm -hmm. it's not going to be a bad move. Like when you have somebody crash it's probably a season. someone there. Uh, yeah. I want there to be more, honestly, all stars in the main game. Like, yeah. I, I don't understand why they don't bring people back, bring characters back more. Totally. All stars on a second tour. Like yeah. they, they're still looking for love and it's people we already know. So we're already invested. I, yeah. I don't get a lot of those decisions. I don't either. Maybe like they're, less easy to manipulate or something? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's some of the behind the scenes stuff we will never know with regard to those decisions. Yeah. But what we have outlined here are 10 things that we think are crucial. I mean, the the resurrection cards are just kind of an idea, I guess. They're not maybe as important as (laughs) the other stuff. They're crucial. Okay. I just think it's a... If not resurrection cards, I'm going to consider those a failure. I just think the resurrection cards are, to me a better way to involve audience participation than they've ever done on bachelor because it is this thing that's like, well, you want to watch the whole season of bachelor in paradise to see who you really like. And also if somebody winds up in a relationship at the end of paradise, it's not going to be that person. You're going to, you can only vote the people who are like heartbroken, who, who wound up getting the biggest Mm -hmm. victimization edits at the end. That's who we're going to vote for by and large, I would assume. And now you get to bring that person back in. And that's a, a narrative that brings you from paradise Give back a into chance. Bachelor. So it, it's yeah. a thread that connects all of your main shows. Um, so that's why I think I did listen good. to your heart and didn't have a single person come back who was a musician. Yeah, it, absolutely insane. But it's just a, a big missed, missed op. I completely agree with you. Um, but we hope that these suggestions have landed somewhere with somebody who uh, hears them out and can do anything about them. God. Okay. Are you there, God? It's Bachelor Clues and Space <laughs> Case with these suggestions <laughs> for Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're in grade school and they're like, "If you, what is the first thing you'd do if you were president? And you're like, I would save Bachelor in Paradise. Um, 
these ideas are simply <laughs> ideas, but we do think they're good ones. We personally love Paradise. It is the all-star game of our mm-hmm. favorite franchise. We don't want to see it go That's away. That's why we're doing this episode. Yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> if we can help in some way, just with brain power, mm-hmm. which is what we are giving here, uh, we hope that it We it got one help. and a half. <laughs> we got one and a half brains? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I'm saying <laughs> I'm the half. <laughs> Okay, I think we have two full brains. Uh, that Thanks, that'll be our new slogan: "Game of Roses, two full brains." But um, <laughs> again, we hope that this is helpful to someone in some Close. way. We are very hopeful that uh, Paradise comes back mm-hmm. for a season ten. It would be such a disservice to these outstanding <sighs> players from season twenty-eight. I that is, it's like they're gonna not. It's like they're gonna stop the NFL. When there's all these college team kids that are so good, and we just want to see them play in the NFL, but it yeah. is gone. And I would even see for casting, like maybe there will be some outliers. You know, if somebody doesn't want to come to Paradise or whatever, fine. Then you got to get somebody to slot them in. But I would literally just take the top ten players that were not the ring winner, and I would go down that list yeah. and be like, invite, 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 invite. And if somebody says I don't want to do it, you just notch it down one more, and you keep going like Notched that. Notch down. <laughs> Yeah. That's how I would cast every season. Don't notch down to the old seasons, though. Yes. Don't notch down that far. No one can come back from those. They are dead. They are buried. Let them rest. Let them rest. But that's it. Let them rest with no resurrection card. (laughs) That is, (laughs) unless it's Blake Moynes coming back as Bachelor. That is our (laughs) um, How to Save Bachelor in Paradise episode. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Whoever may have joined us to hear these Mm -hmm. ideas. And uh, we'll be back on Friday with a brand new This Week in Bachelor Nation covering all the stuff that's been going on uh, parasocially, in the news, et cetera, et cetera. Until then, Pace Case, what is that dwab at? It's been 8,051 days without an Asian bachelor. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. This is paradise. This is how to save that